I have read some pretty amazing books this past summer and I would love to share them with you today. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm a mom to four. I love to homeschool and I love to read good books and I love to share both of those things on this channel. So if you also love those things, please consider subscribing. So today's video is a wrap up of sorts. I have found that I am quite terrible at making reading wrap up videos. I just don't feel like I can explain the books well enough or I don't remember the books well enough and so all of these things, but I have some books that I've read over the last number of months that have just been so wonderful that I want to take the time to share them with you. I also have one quite terrible book, in my opinion, that I'm gonna share with you, although there are a number of people who love this book. And so I'm gonna leave that till the end just because I'm a little scared of what everybody thinks, but it just wasn't my type of book. So anyway, let me get into the books. So the first one is We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter. So one of my subscribers recommended this to me and I'm so thankful she did. This was an amazing book. So first, what's it about? So it's a World War II historical fiction book. It's a book about a family in Poland. And so Poland was one of the first countries to be invaded by the Nazis. And so they kind of got caught off guard a little bit more than some of the other countries in Europe. And this book tells the story of each of their journeys as the war kind of gets going all the way through the end of the war. And some of the characters go through just horrific things and they follow the mom and the dad who are just really not able to leave. They get stuck when like they close down the cities and they kind of create these ghettos for the Jews. And it's just, man, there's so many things and all the different brothers and sisters and their wives and kids. And so at first I didn't know if I would like having so many multiple perspectives. And, and I did like, I felt like there was a number of the family members that I really attached to that I was just rooting for them. And I wanted to hear what happened and how did they get through this? And I think a lot of it for me is it kind of brought up the, like, how would I do that? Cause there was one woman in particular who had a young child and it just really resonated with me as a mother and just like, wow, just how hard that would have been. And so it was just a, a beautiful story, a beautiful story about a family and just their resilience in just one of the hardest times in history. So I really, really loved it. Five stars. And actually all of the books I'm gonna talk about today are five stars, so I don't have to say that again. They're all five stars except for that last one. So next book I wanna talk about is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. So this book also was a subscriber recommendation book. I actually made a video about books that subscribers have recommended to me and these two have just knocked it out of the park for me. So I love this book. It's a thriller book. It's about a woman who struggles to go outside. So agoraphobia, I think is what it's called. So she's fearful of the outdoors. She doesn't leave the house, so she's a little bit bored. She watches old movies, drinks too much and spies on her neighbors. And then she witnesses something with the neighbors across the street. And it kind of pushes her out of her comfort zone. It pushes her out of her house, really. And just all the things that happen with that, it's an excellent story. I didn't see the end coming. I know some people do, but that is actually what I really liked about this book is it left enough like clues and breadcrumbs that the whole time you're trying to solve it, you're like, well, maybe they're doing this, or maybe it was this. And so I had all of these theories and all of these ideas and I was not right and not really close, but that's okay. It was still a very enjoyable book and the end and the way it wrapped up made sense. So it's not that I didn't guess because it was completely nonsensical. It made sense. I just didn't guess that. And I just really liked it. I liked it a ton. And mind you, her character is not the most likable. She's a very, I don't know what it's called. I think like an untrustworthy narrator, something like that, where you're just not sure if you're getting the full story from her or if her perspective even makes sense because she's an alcoholic and things like that. And typically for me personally, I don't tend to jive with main characters who are alcoholics or addicts or struggle in those ways. And I think it just comes a little bit from my childhood and I just don't enjoy that. And so part of me did not enjoy her character, but the story kept moving and was very engaging. And so I just really enjoyed the book regardless of her character. So I highly recommend this. I really, really enjoyed it. All right, what else? Oh, this book. So The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. Oh my gosh, this book. 
just kind of is a, a book that just rips your heart out, especially if you're a parent. And so it's a historical fiction book set in Australia in the early 1900s, so it's kind of after World War I because the man is a vet from World War I. And so the story is just beautiful. So he becomes a lighthouse keeper and he marries this woman and they move out to this really remote island to man the lighthouse, basically. And then they struggle with infertility and they just have miscarriage after miscarriage, which is just heartbreaking. And then one night they hear a baby crying and they find a baby in a boat with a dead man and they take the baby in to care for it. And then the story gets a little bit gray, I guess is a good word for it, a little bit um, where you question their decision. You understand partly how they got there, like their emotional toil, but at the same time, what they're doing isn't right. And so it was just an excellent book. I think I liked it a lot because the characters were well developed. You could really feel for both characters, both the man and the wife and just her like struggle with not being able to have kids and then his struggle with some of the decisions they made, how it would just eat him up from inside. It's a really excellent book, especially if you are just looking for an emotional book. It is definitely that. It took a little bit to get into. I feel like at first I was like, this is a little boring, but then it picked up and then I couldn't put it down. So I just loved this book. Really, really good. Okay, next book. Oh, this was so good. And I know this is the political season and all of that. And it's just a crazy time right now, especially in the States. But I enjoyed this book immensely. I enjoyed hearing her perspective and hearing about her life, like as she grew up and her parents and just the, the struggles they went through and the things they did to sacrifice for their kids. And just the parenting style of the mom, I really liked. And the mom remains a character throughout the whole book. And then just to see kind of the inner monologue of Michelle Obama as she's struggling with different things like parenthood and career and how do you make those mesh and then getting married to Barack Obama and then him being just a big personality and having big vision and big dreams, but yet she was very supportive of that and very passionate about a lot of things that he was passionate about, but she wasn't him. She was still first lady and she the things she did with her position, I just really respect her for because she didn't have to. There's no description for what first ladies do or have to do, but she just took it upon herself to just work on some of the things that just really touched her heart, such as childhood obesity and things like that. So I just, I just love this book. And I know some people will just hate it on principle, but just her heart and her words are just really, they were just really beautiful and they were really touching to me. So I really liked it. I highly recommend it. So last book that got a five star over this past couple months is The Call of the Wild and Free by Ainsley Arment. So this is a homeschooling book and it's just a very beautiful, very encouraging homeschooling book. And it's like beautiful, I mean, like it's full of all of these pictures of just amazing ideas. So the general purpose of this, it's not really a homeschool style, it's more of just a homeschool way of being. The idea of like really trying to see things through the perspective of your kids' eyes, their wonder, their curiosity, their creativity, all of those things, and trying to foster that and just aid them in that instead of push kind of like a standard educational agenda, if you will. And so this is just beautiful. I'm not saying by any means I have adopted this wholeheartedly or even a little. I think it's more of a thing that I just find beautiful and encouraging. And if I could do a little bit of it, especially kind of on our nature days, I feel successful in that. Or if I could do a little bit of it in just our play and how I encourage play in our house, I feel successful in it. Am I a wild and free mama? Probably not but I still really, really enjoyed this book and I recommend it. And I don't even think you really have to homeschool it. It is just more of a way of approaching your kid's childhood. So it's just beautiful, I love it. So I like that book. Okay, as for the book I just did not like, I would probably call this my least favorite book of the year. And I just hate to do that. I hate to slam books and I'm not really meaning to slam it. I just did not like this. And I realized a few things why I don't like this. 
So I did not like sharp objects by Gillian Flynn. I read Gone Girl a number of years ago and I liked it. I thought it was clever. I knew it was a psychological thriller and I knew the main character was just a little bit messed up and she was, but it was still an entertaining story. This um, is about a girl who goes back to her hometown as a newspaper reporter and she's reporting on some girls going missing in her hometown and she has to move back in with her parents or her mother and her stepfather and it's just a weird family for sure and then she gets into what's going on she kind of starts investigating so the general premise is good actually the general premise of the book i have no problems with i thought it was very interesting i thought the end wrapped up nicely and i thought it was clever what i did not like about this book is its grittiness and people will call this kind of a gritty psychological thriller and i didn't really know what gritty meant because they would also call Gone Girl that, and I didn't think Gone Girl like, went too far. But this book, I just felt like it could have told the story, it was a good story, without going where it went with the main character. So basically the main character was just messed up for some good reasons from her childhood, but kind of travel along in her thought patterns and her way of thinking, and you're just like, gah, you depress me, and your choices are just ridiculous. I realize it's naive to think that like she could have had the childhood she was described to have had and not had problems, but she had just so many problems and I just felt like there could have been less. It didn't have to go all the places it went and it could have still been really good and I think that's what just irritated me about the book because the general premise didn't bug me, but the how messed up the characters were bugged me. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I know some people loved it, but some people are huge Gillian Flynn fans and I'm just not sure if I am. I'm not sure if I'm ready to pick up another just because I just didn't like it. And that's okay. I don't have to read gritty thrillers. There's lots of thrillers out there that I can read that don't go as far as this went. So anyway, I just didn't like it, but to each his own. So those are my five star books. So there's five, five star books from kind of the last number of months up through the summer and it's just been great and I've really enjoyed reading and I just feel like reading has been a wonderful relaxing pastime in just the year of 2020. So that is all I have for this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch and let me know below if you've had a favorite book that you just want to share about that you've been raving about. Please share that below. I would love to know that and get some future recommendations since those have been excellent. Please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already subscribed, and thank you for taking the time to stop by. All right, I will see you in the next book video. All right, take care.